it's been nine months now since we lost the wanted Tom Parker, but his wife Kelsey wants to help more people come to terms with their own grief. She's invited the cameras in to see how she and her two young children get a bit of help from a few famous friends, and some of them you might recognise. Let's have a little look. Sometimes, it's obviously, you've got to try and say how you're feeling, what you're going through. Yeah. There might be times where you just don't want to... You say it. Or you just want to get distracted, like, with other people's stuff, maybe. And I'm sure it's a full-time job with the kids. Like, this morning, she was asking me questions about his birthday and stuff. She was like, oh, it's going to be uh, Uncle Danny's birthday. And I was like, well, actually, it's, it, it would have been your dad's birthday yeah. on Thursday. And then she was like, oh, well, what does that mean? Is it this Thursday coming yeah, up? Yeah, it would have been his like, birthday. Well, Kelsey joins us now. It's lovely to see you. Lovely Thank you for you. coming in. We'll talk about the documentary in just a moment. Firstly, can we ask how you're doing? How's it been? Do you know what? It's just such a tough question always to answer. Mm. Like, it's been a hard few weeks for me, really hard. But I'm here and I'm trying to be present and, you know... It's interesting, isn't it? Because even we said, because we met Tom few times, many times mm. over the years on this show. You know, the, and we exactly were so wonderful uh, uh, on that show and talking about all that he was going through already then. Um, we, you, you know, know, we said we lost Tom Parker Wanted. But of course, really, for you, you lost your husband. And it, it, has it helped in a way by inviting the cameras back that was so much a part of your life for being married to him to, to show the impact of his passing on you. Yeah, do you know what, for me, I was so... When I first got asked to do it, I was a bit worried and a bit like, can I actually do this? But yeah. for me, it's the best thing that I've actually done because it's actually been therapy for me. Mm. And I've done things in the show that I wouldn't necessarily have done, but it's massively helped me. It's almost pushed you to it's, tackle things. It's really pushed me out yeah. of my comfort zones as well, that I wouldn't mm. have gone to certain places and, and been there. Yeah. So grief is such a personal thing, Kelsey. I mean, how have you found that and understanding grief now, not least through this documentary, meeting people that have their own experience of grief? It, and it is the understanding grief. I didn't really understand what grief was because nothing like this has ever happened to me and it's the biggest thing that could happen to anyone. But with grief, you can feel so many different emotions all at one time. So you can be happy, you can be sad, you can be angry. You can be, well, obviously, there's guilt. There's so many different elements to grief that you just don't even understand until it actually happens to you. You say, obviously, there's guilt. What do you mean by that? Well, for I'm me, not sure it would be obvious to people me, who haven't been through it. There's massive, there's so much guilt, and that's what is a theme through the show, that um, I've just got a lot of guilt for... I know that I did everything for Tom, yeah. but I don't know. Even, even still, there is just that guilt process of I've, I've lost him. Do you feel and you guilty because you're enough? still here? Or... Yeah, I feel guilty that I'm still here mm. and I'm I've still... And, like, you know, I look at my kids every morning and I'm like, I'm guilty that he's not experiencing mm. what I'm experiencing with them. Mm. Even though you know that he would want you to experience it, he would want you to live a life, because that's the approach he took. It, we were positive. the path he was on. Yeah, and he would want me to be happy, and that's it, isn't it? That's all I can do now. I, he's not coming back. He has died, and it is just me and my beautiful children left behind. There are physical reminders of him, of course, all over your house, I'm sure. Some that are really, really important, but some you kind of sort of get lost, you think, I don't really know how to get past this. What is that process like just in terms of understanding that life moves on you still can remember him it's not going to diminish his his importance to you and the children but actually you need to make some changes it's hard you know it's hard making decisions of what to keep what to get rid of like you just want to keep everything mm. but then you then are constantly reminded of mm. certain objects and it's like the memories are here and here in my heart so an mm. object doesn't actually mean anything but you don't realize you know it, the struggle to actually get that out of your house and also, there's a there's a reason to keep, but there's also a reason to give to away and, a, and allow the memories to be there. And it's almost like the letting go. You don't want to let go of that person. Because you're like, you're letting You're losing them. You're losing mm. them even more than the loss you've had. We are launching our One Million Minutes campaign, mm. which is to tackle loneliness. And loneliness comes, of course, in many, many forms. We often are very moved by thinking about older people who've lost someone later in life and find themselves alone at Christmas and other times of the year. But there's a loneliness to grief that even if you're surrounded by people is ever-present, isn't there? You could be in a room full of people and still feel lonely. Like, because people don't understand how I feel and it's really hard for my friends and family because mm. they can't imagine how I actually feel. You know, mm. Christmas is going to be so tough for me this year. Mm. 
last year, Aurelia did understand the Christmas process, and this year she's going to, you know, she's a year older. And it's me that, like, Tom's not going to be there this year. Mm. We're not going to wake up Christmas morning together as a family. It's going to be me and the kids. Do you think that doing the, the documentary has allowed you to not only verbalise your grief, but also your family will be able to understand, maybe, because you're saying they can't understand how I feel. They might be able to get a grip on and actually what you're going through and how difficult it's yeah, been. Yeah, and I think the grief ripples through the family. Mm -hmm. So it's not just me, you know, it's Tom's parents, it's Tom's brother, it's my family. Like, it, it's the ripple effect and how grief affects us all so differently. Mm -hmm. Like, my little brothers, they've lost their big brother and it's mm -hmm. how they're grieving now. Mm -hmm. Of course, and, and everybody does it differently. There will be people experiencing grief this mm. Christmas. It, it may be experiencing grief for the first time this morning, waking up to, to losing someone. Is there any advice you would give them? I just think you have to go with the emotions, and it is a roller coaster. Mm. And that's all I can say. Like, it, sometimes it's just waves. You might be, like, so happy, and then a song comes on, and you just burst into tears, and you're like, why am I now crying? Yeah. You I think you've just got to embrace it and, you know, try and live your life now and, get, and do it as best as you can. Is there things you avoid or things you embrace, Kelsey, over the course of the last nine months that have helped you through those moments? I've definitely avoided the wanted music. Like, really? I just can't listen to Tom's voice. It just actually breaks my heart. Mm. Mm. And I think music was such... Like, it was so relevant in our relationship. Mm. Like, we've been together for 13 years. Music was our life. And for me, it just is really hard for me to listen to his voice. Something you... so personal, isn't it? It's so personal. It? And Tom's lyrics are so raw as yeah. to what he sings now, actually reflecting on it. Do you think you'll get to the point where you can listen? I I'm hoping to. Mm. But, you know, the kids want to listen. Can we listen to Daddy's songs? I'm like, of course. Can we go to Nanny's house and listen? <laughs> it's oh, so Kelsey. tough. It's so tough, isn't it, Kelsey? It's really tough. And you just wouldn't wash wish this upon anyone. Like, I wouldn't mm. wish this feeling that I have upon no. anyone. How was mm. the trek? You did a five-day trek in the Sahara. Yep. I mean, is that something that you would have done previously? N you know, no, probably not. But when I got offered it, I was like, absolutely. Let's, you know, this has been a tough year. Let's do a challenge. And it was a challenge, but it was, like, inspiring. Mm. The women I trekked with, and men, were incredible. Fantastic. Fantastic. Grabbing those challenges and those moments in life is about making the most of everything. Yeah, and it? living life. You get one life. That's what Tom's taught me. You mm. have one life. You, you've got to live it. Well, look, um, you know, knowing Tom as little as we did and loving him to bits, he would be so proud of you. He would be so proud of what you're doing and uh, how you're continuing his family that he adores so much. And I think doing this documentary will help so many people. Yeah. So all power to your elbow. It's Lovely on ITVB, isn't it, tonight? Yeah. Nine till ten. Yeah. Kelsey, thanks so much for coming in. Thank you so much for having me. Not at all. It's so nice yeah. to see you. Now, if you've been affected by any of the issues we've been discussing, you can find advice and support at itv.com forward slash helplines.